Welcome everybody to our third lecture from our brother, Phil Stevens, eminent anthropologist. I'm happy to welcome you on behalf of myself and my brother, Peter, who have, uh, we have co-organized this. And I'm going to ask you all to remain mute during Phil's talk, but if you have questions, please drop them in the chat. And if there's time at the end, we'll be ending at five sharp. But if there's time, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll moderate the questions from the chat and get, get answers for you. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand the podium over to Peter, who will introduce our fabulous brother, Phil. Thank you, Peter. Thanks, Ruth, and my fab our fabulous brother, Phil. Phil Stevens retired in 2019 after 48 years in the anthropology department at the University of Buffalo, the State University of New York. He received his BA in English from Yale in 1963, then served with the Peace Corps in Nigeria for three years, where I had the pleasure of visiting him. Those experiences brought him into anthropology, and he entered the graduate program at Northwestern University. He conducted dissertation research in different areas of Nigeria between 1969 and 71 and earned his PhD in 1973. He has conducted subsequent anthropological research in West Africa and the Caribbean, and is the author of many publications in cultural anthropology and African studies. And he is the recipient of two awards for excellence in teaching. One of his most popular courses at University of Buffalo was in the anthropology of magic, sorcery, and witchcraft, and he is currently writing a book on that topic. He lectures frequently to community groups on subjects of current concern, and we're delighted once again to have Phil with us today. Phil, over to you. Thank you very much. I'm going to try uh, to uh, my screen and get everything uh, set up. Please tell me right now if, if, if there's any problem with your seeing this. This is uh, a title I have come up with. Uh, and I want to uh, dedicate my talk today to our dear sister-in-law, Peggy. Ruth had suggested this topic for my last, I presume it's my last. I tried to dissuade her to uh, allow me to talk on something more current, but looking at the uh, current news, recent news, I realized that this is a current topic. I, to my surprise, cults is on, uh, on pe in people's conversation. Uh, this is a, uh, a, a statement I copied. I don't expect you to read the whole thing from, uh, from uh, the uh, weekly uh, uh, journal called Religion Watch, which is published at Baylor. The reference is at the top. Cults are in style again. And uh, uh, these two headlines from the opinion section of the Los Angeles Times for February 21st this year, and a couple of months later, just last month, uh, you might have seen this one, a speculation about uh, Mother uh, Teresa. So cults are indeed uh, a topic of current concern. Um, there is an overlap between what I'm going to say to you today and what I said to you last time in our, my talk on conspiracy theories. Uh, and uh, you might recognize this. This is the cover of what I consider the best um, social science uh, book on cults published in 1981. Uh, th uh, three, uh, four of the um, major cults of the time are pictured on, on the cover. Uh, with uh, Jim Jones and uh, uh, Sung Mung Moon and Jesus uh, and the uh, uh, Guru Prada, who's I've forgotten his name, sorry, uh, of the uh, Divine Light Mission. Uh, the current, the uh, 20th century uh, cult scare that that book is referring to uh, began in the uh, 1970s 
uh, one of the uh, stimuli for such a, a scare was uh, this guy, Anton LaVey, who established the Church of Satan, uh, which really has little to do with Satan as a theological figure, but rather it's about uh, hedonism. But just the name Satanism uh, stirred up people. Charlie Manson and uh, his so-called family, but others called it a cult of murderous young women, also from the 70s, and the missing children uh, 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 panics, which spread across the country. This is really curious because there were no more missing children during that period than in any other recent period of history, but it all uh, was a background to uh, the Satanism scares of the 1980s, which I'll come to shortly. Um, the uh, uh, most uh, newsworthy uh, of all organizations called cults was led by Jim Jones, uh, also seriously misunderstood. Uh, in, uh, he was a pastor in California uh, who uh, developed an organization called the People's Temple uh, to which people flocked. Uh, he was immensely popular. He was e egalitarian. Uh, his, uh, his congregations were mixed uh, black and white, uh, and he preached uh, reconciliation between the races. Uh, and here he is receiving the uh, Martin Luther King Humanitarian Award of 1977 from Pastor Cecil Williams. You can look him up. And by the way, I'm going to be going pretty quickly over a number of very complex uh, uh, movements and groups. And I have double checked everything I say here today can be found online. And Wikipedia has very good essays on most of these cults that I'm going to uh, mention. Uh, and so, so uh, Jones uh, started off uh, 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 with real uh, genuine humanitarian uh, concerns and of course um, ended this way, uh, a terrible um, ending to his movement uh, featured uh, uh, on the cover of two national news magazines with that phrase, the cult of, of death. Also in the 1970s was a resurgence of paganism, modern paganism uh, represented mostly by Wicca uh, who a group of uh, nature worshipers who called themselves witches. They should not have done that because witch and witchcraft have a terrible reputation in, in the West. Uh, they did not know evil. They professed, they believed in magic, but they uh, said that magic was only for the good. Any member who tried to work, use their powers for evil uh, would be stymied because of the notion of karma, what goes around comes around, you know. The Druids of North America were another modern pagan movement resurrecting what they believed to be ancient uh, beliefs and practices. Uh, and uh, the Church of All Worlds was a modern pagan uh, uh, church established in uh, Minnesota, I think, or, or Northern Michigan. Uh, here is a Wiccan uh, priestess. Wiccans upset local communities by their practice of dancing naked, uh, skyclad as they called it. Uh, the word cult has also been applied to widespread uh, admiration of some central figure, the cult of the Virgin Mary, and that phrase is still used uh, today. Uh, and this one is self-explanatory. You might remember a uh, cover of the New Republic for uh, August 1992. Um, the Jesus people, uh, uh, they are Christians, but they were labeled as cults by uh, uh, outsiders. And uh, the Satanism scares of the 1980s uh, focused uh, primarily on children, and that's important. I'll get, come back to that shortly. Um, but uh, Modern Maturity, the magazine of the AARP, uh, saw in it a threat to seniors as well. And uh, of course, 1919, just uh, sorry, 2019, just a, 
Uh, two years ago, this book was published uh, using that same uh, concept. Um, the uh, organization called St. Jude, St. Jude Retreats has labeled AA as a cult based on this long list of their perceptions of Alcoholics Anonymous and why it is a, uh, a cult. So let's pause for a moment and look at the various meanings of this, uh, of this word. It really is a loaded uh, term, semantically loaded. Uh, the Latin derivation is, is, is at the top uh, and you might be surprised to see that it is it, the root, the word comes from the same root as the word culture uh, and cultivate. Uh, and uh, in anthropology and theology, it was a respectable term. It referred to the core of a religion. We could speak of the Catholic cult, the central focus of Catholicism, the, the Eucharist, right? Uh, or the, the group uh, of people, the adherents uh, to the faith are called the cult. Um, a medicinal cult or medical cult is a, a group of people uh, uh, allied around a, uh, a faith healer or some other um, miraculous uh, medical um, uh, leader. These kinds of movements are particularly developed during times of pandemics. Um, and we saw a few of such uh, in the past year with the um, um, allegations of, of certain uh, medicines as, as being effective against COVID-19. Uh, but the word also has negative meanings. A religion regarded as unorthodox, blasphemous, or spurious might be called a cult. Oh, that's just a cult. I think the most common meaning is the next one. Uh, and when people think of uh, people use the word, uh, this is what they mean, a tightly controlled group with an autocratic megalomaniacal uh, leader um, uh, who uh, brainwashes uh, his subjects and has them under some kind of a, of a, um, of a control. Uh, they are sworn to uh, uh, certain strictures and to give over their material possessions to the leader. Uh, who controls them and controls sexuality and labor and so on and so on. Um, most, as we'll see shortly, most of the ideas of a cult, of what a cult is, um, were formed by outsiders, people looking in. Um, the terms have been applied surprisingly to uh, of, of central uh, groups of the origins of organized religion. Um, Christianity clearly began as a cult, uh, as did uh, Islam. We may or may not find it important to distinguish cults from sects. What's the difference? A sect is an uh, aberrant or a variant form of an established religion, uh, a, a, a larger a uh, broader faith uh, uh, formed by a, a leader or, or a group of people uh, who, who uh, interpret the teachings of the larger faith in a different way. Uh, and they are uh, significant enough in their formulation that they uh, have received separate designation. Uh, a religious organization, a true religion has several criteria. It has a congregation, it has a doctrine, uh, it has a liturgy, uh, an order of ritual worship, and a, a permanent place or a designated uh, place for worship, and sects uh, have all such. There are other terms for some of these groups that we call uh, uh, cults, fringe religious groups, New religions or alternative religions are the respectable terms that, that uh, scholars use in their study of such groups. As an anthropologist, I have looked at cults, and Peter didn't mention, but I, or maybe he did, that religion has been one of my areas of interest. And I have taught courses on um, a religion, the emergence of new religious movements, especially during times of rapid cultural change. 
Uh, and cults have been classified, organized by social scientists for the purposes of, of study. Uh, millenarian or millennial or messianic or chiliastic uh, cults are those that are focused around a doctrine of the, uh, of the end times, uh, a doctrine of uh, a messiah, a, a divinely inspired leader who is going to either restore a golden age from the past or who is going to hasten the coming of a future paradise. Um, and they flourish in religions that have those concepts of a past golden age or a future uh, paradise. Uh, if they focus on the end uh, and what's going to happen at the end, they might get the, the label apop apocalyptic or uh, so-called doomsday uh, cults. Uh, if they focus on better ways of doing things, of self-help, improvement for a native population who have felt themselves oppressed by uh, a dominant uh, intruder uh, culture, uh, they are likely to be uh, under the heading of revitalization movements. Um, there, are, there have been many of those throughout history, and indeed Christianity was a revitalization movement. Uh, if the focus is on the leader of the, the movement, they might be called prophet cults. You may have heard the term UFO cults or flying saucer cults, which, have, which are uniquely 20th and 21st century, I think. Um, uh, focused on the idea that there are uh, uh, aliens who are visiting us, that aliens have visited us in the past, uh, that there is a future uh, uh, for believers uh, in an alien um, realm of, of the cosmos, etc. Uh, and uh, in traditional religi religions, little groups of people who focus on specific purposes um, are called cults, and these terms are used respect respectably uh, in uh, anthropology. An ancestor cult is found throughout Africa, throughout Asia, where ancestors are the dominant supernatural uh, uh, group. Uh, in my work in the northeastern Nigeria, a, a, a little kingdom called Bachama, I, I did some studies of the, of the rain cult, a group of priests whose sole job it is to control the rain. Uh, and in times of social stress, when witch hunts might develop, um, uh, which cults of witch finders, specially endowed people who have abilities to identify witches and drive them out uh, will, uh, will emerge. So the term has a wide range of, of, of meaning and application. Uh, explanation, why are there cults? What do they do for people? And of course, why do people uh, join them uh, are critical questions that everyone asks. Um, the answer to the first question of why do they, why do they exist? what do they do, uh, are um, addressed through two of the fundamental uh, uh, methods of scientific investigation. Uh, the first is correlation, what else is going on, what other factors are, are, uh, might, uh, can be identified that might uh, um, help us to understand, uh, and uh, functions, what purposes do they serve. We'll come back to both of these later. But the big question and part of uh, the blurb that uh, Ruth sent around to you all is why do people join? And the answers to these to this kind of question are not abstruse. They are really quite quite simple. Um, and it, it boils down to uh, this: the answer to the same same question addressed of of, of, of why uh, people join anything. Why do people join clubs? Uh, bridge clubs or book clubs or uh, country clubs, um, um, golf clubs, why do people join any organization? Uh, and the answers, the simplest answer uh, is uh, because that organization offers something that 
uh, I feel that, that I want. I feel that will benefit me. Uh, and the costs of joining are not as great as the benefits of membership. Um, so there are a number of economic explanations for, for cults, emotional, ideological, um, but as we'll see also later on, um, the most important reasons I think for, for uh, membership in cults are social. Uh, to satisfy basic needs of human sociality. Uh, and I'll, I'll stress this uh, later on. Not only loneliness, but also the, the normal of fully developed sociality of well-adjusted people who want to be with other people who think like they do. And that, uh, those are the fundamental, the principal reasons that Bromley and Shoup uh, found when they interviewed people uh, in cults back in the 70s, when, when there was a great cult scare going on. Um, and a problem with this kind of, a, of study uh, then and now uh, is that the idea of a cult is formulated mostly by people on the outside who focus their attention, I suggest, on their idea of the content of the cult itself, the mostly on the beliefs and the, the question, why do people believe this stuff? Um, the fact is uh, that the members of the cult may, might be far more interested in, in one another than they are in the uh, um, superficial alleged uh, beliefs and that the um, perceptions of outsiders are, are, are inaccurate. Back in the early 1980s, I investigated a, a group of, of people who met every Sunday uh, here in Buffalo uh, uh, for various uh, ex explorations of various new age uh, beliefs. Uh, and they met uh, at a designated place downtown, but also at different people's houses. Uh, they brought covered dishes and desserts and, you know, potluck kinds of meals. They always had a central speaker and the topics were really bizarre. Um, past lives regressions, uh, uh, extraterrestrial intelligences, uh, psychic phenomena, uh, distant healing, remote uh, viewing and all of these kinds of things. And if I had been judging st strictly from outside, I would have had that same pr perspective. But I went with uh, the, the, this fellow who was a, a participant to several of the meetings and I, uh, I watched as they watched and listened to their presenters very politely, uh, interestedly, but the major activities of the cult uh, of the groups were social uh, and they seemed they couldn't wait to get the presentation out of the way so they could um, reune with each other and uh, talk about children and schools and um, their jobs and 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 so forth uh, and i came to the conclusion that uh, that the appeal of this group was far, was, was far more social uh, than uh, ideological. And I, uh, uh, after reading a lot since then, uh, uh, the 40 years since then, uh, I've realized that this same conclusion can be applied to many other groups. And that's the conclusion that Bromley and Shoup uh, came to. We also need to recognize that some alleged cults are imaginary, but the word cult is applied to them. Um, Margaret Murray, who was an Egyptologist uh, who published this book in 1921, this was terrifically influential. And in fact, it was influential in the formation of Wicca, uh, the modern neo-pagans in the, in the 19. Uh, uh, 70s, well, the 1930s in England and the 1970s in America, there was no witch cult in Western Europe. Uh, it was a, a belief uh, system and it remained a belief system. Uh, and in the 1980s, which I'll come to in a few minutes, um, the uh, uh, fears of satanic cults 
which spread across the US and throughout the Western hemisphere and from there into uh, Southern uh, uh, areas of the world, South, South America, Australia, uh, and literally a, a, almost completely around the world, fears of satanic cults, which did not exist. There was no such thing anywhere. Uh, Anton LaVey's Church of Satan was not what they were uh, afraid of. And other imaginary cults have existed in modern times, especially in Haiti, uh, where they have had political uh, functions. The uh, leaders of Haiti have used such beliefs to, to uh, deter people from trying to uh, upset them. The, uh, the Bizongo, the Zobop, and the Tonton Makut were real people. They were thugs that went around at night and beat people up. But the powers that they were alleged to have uh, were fictional. Uh, remember the so-called MS-13, which is a group of Salvadoran refugees which started in California and spread to Long Island and, and, uh, and the boroughs of, of New York City. Um, this was a, um, a terrible bloodthirsty uh, gang, a very successful gang, and the fears of them were spread by Donald Trump and, and uh, several others. There is indeed, or was anyway, such a group, but the satanic activities uh, uh, that went along with them and the, the other uh, extraordinary aspects of, of their ide alleged ideology were largely fictional. And I'm ending the, this set of examples with QAnon because this still, so far as we still know, is imaginary. There is no such group of people who meet uh, somewhere, but the beliefs ascribed to QAnon are these classic uh, universal um, fears the, that have come through witchcraft into through Satanism and into many of these other lesser uh, organizations. Uh, fears of nocturnal activity, fears of social subversion, fears of, of, of murder, uh, of, of kidnapping and other forms of danger for children, uh, fears of illicit sexuality, and ultimately fears of cannibalism and vampirism. We'll come back to some of these uh, later. Um, cults are, are groups that have been called cults have been very important in the history of, of, of our uh, country. Let's look at some American cults uh, briefly. They start in the 17th century among the most uh, well-known uh, as another imaginary set of, of cults, the diabolic witches uh, of New England. There were uh, many in different areas. Uh, Hartford, Connecticut had its witch scares and executions for witchcraft in the 1650s. And of course, Salem, Massachusetts in 1692. Uh, women mostly and men who confessed to impossible acts, uh, to meeting in, in a cult-like activity with the devil presiding. Uh, in 1694, uh, a German named uh, uh, Johannes uh, Kelpius uh, came from what is now actually Romania, Transylvania, where vampires come from, although there's no mention of vampirism in his movement. He uh, interpreted revelation as so many um, apocalyptic uh, cult leaders do uh, and established what came to be known as the Society of the Woman in the Wilderness. Uh, you can see uh, its remains, or at least read a plaque about it, uh, in the Wissahickon Creek area of the city of Philadelphia today. Wissahickon uh, is the location where he established his, his uh, headquarters in, in 1694. The Shakers, the United Society of Believers in Tr Christ's Second Appearing in the 1780s, and the late 18th century, um, a, a first resurrection of the ancient uh, um, practice and belief system of, of uh, Druidry. Each of these um, has a place in, uh, 
in uh, American history, but not, none were so influential as those that developed uh, in the 19th uh, uh, century, uh, leading, uh, taking off from um, Pastor uh, Jonathan Edwards uh, from Northampton, Massachusetts, near where the Stevens uh, family uh, uh, grew up. Um, Jonathan Edwards, uh, 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 early Congregationalist, um, a revivalist, was the, we could say, the harbinger of what came to be called the First Great Awakening, uh, a, a series of Christian uh, revivals that uh, uh, had profound influence on subsequent religious uh, activity. Uh, Jonathan Edwards movements, uh, revivalist uh, movements, uh, created the foundation of modern evangelicalism, including the idea of, of being born again, new birth, which was essential, uh, he said, uh, to becoming a proper uh, uh, Christian. Some pictures of the uh, uh, alleged uh, an, uh, ancient uh, Druids and modern uh, uh, Druids, uh, and a variety of 19th of utopian communities that developed uh, in the uh, 19th uh, century, 18th and 19th century in uh, uh, Eastern uh, US. Uh, some of the most important ones are mentioned here, but there are, there are uh, many more. Harmony, Indiana, Indiana was a very successful group of, by, by the late eight, 1820s, uh, they had seven different villages in Indiana. Uh, they were a, a kind of an agricultural uh, commune, um, uh, focusing on economic uh, development. All of these groups uh, had egalitarian principles, e equality of men and women and so on. The Amana colonies were, who started uh, right here in Western New York and West Seneca moved uh, to Iowa when they needed more space and, and their um, net worth when they uh, finally uh, dissolved somewhere in the 1940s, I think, was, was uh, several million dollars. They were uh, quite uh, successful um, and that was a lot of money uh, in those, uh, in those uh, times. Um, and you know uh, the Amana name on uh, heavy appliances. Uh, Brook Farm and Fruitlands were two other Massachusetts-based uh, uh, agricultural uh, communes uh, whose member who uh, stressed egalitarian principles and the purification of of uh, their uh, Christianity. Uh, Fruitlands was the foundation of what came to what was called transcendentalism, uh, which was a offshoot of Unitarianism. Uh, the idea that the divine is here and now, it is not in the future, uh, it is not in some other realm, it is here uh, in us. Um, people are fundamentally good and pure. Society and its institutions are are uh, polluting and corrupting uh, and by isolating ourselves and becoming self-sufficient, we can uh, uh, purify uh, ourselves. Uh, and Oneida, uh, founded by uh, John Humphrey Noyes. This one is interesting to me because John Humphrey Noyes IV was a classmate of mine at Yale. Uh, the Oneida community in central New York State was also economically uh, successful. Uh, uh, you know the uh, Oneida silversmith, which still exists even though the commune uh, dissolved. Um, I don't have the date of their dissolution. Um, uh, somewhere, in, uh, some decades after they had started. Um, John Humphrey Noyes claimed uh, divine inspiration uh, and uh, a biblical basis for his uh, uh, doctrines of egalitarianism. Uh, 
New York State is also the birthplace of, of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, uh, Joseph Smith, just down the line here from, from us along the New York Thruway in the town of Palmyra in uh, 1828. Uh, and uh, a bit further to the east, uh, uh, up in the uh, up north of New York City and um, in, the, in Washington County was the uh, home of William Miller, uh, who was a for, uh, the formulator of a, um, a uh, uh, sorry, an apocalyptic movement, which uh, uh, developed into the Seventh-day Adventists. Uh, the Millerites uh, believed fir firmly that the world was going to end uh, at, at a number of, of different dates in the 1800s. I think his first date was 1837 or, uh, or somewhere around there. And when it didn't happen, a recalculation of biblical elements led to the uh, uh, revised date of 1840-44. Um, and that didn't happen, but the group did not dissolve as many groups do when the, when the message of the prophet is not fulfilled. The great disappointment was in fact a motivating sentiment uh, and the group persisted and um, they formed the basis for the Seventh-day uh, Adventists. Uh, this is uh, William Miller's home uh, where you, it is now a, a tourist uh, 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 location. And Miller's influence, uh, his interpretation of of the end times, his reading of the book of Revelation was, influ was influential uh, in later, among later theologians and uh, new religion leaders, Charles Taze Russell, um, the founder, founder of what became the Jehovah's Witnesses uh, and various, organiz various movements called Bible study, uh, groups of Bible study students, Bible study movements, um, uh, and that's really what their names were. Uh, and this is the um, process of this great theological awakening of, of surge that came to be called the second great awakening. There were four of them. Um, the religious fervor that swept across New York State uh, in the uh, middle of, of the 19th century was so great uh, that it earned that area earned the label the burned over district which was the title of the book by Whitney Cross this is a map of the uh, uh, dominant areas which were um, burned over by the religious zeal of, of various uh, movements a and here are some of them uh, located specifically with some different labels the Mormons and various groups of Mormons, the Millerites, uh, the uh, uh, followers of Charles Fourier, I have not uh, mentioned. Fourier was a, uh, a French uh, philosopher um, uh, in, who was uh, in, influential uh, in the formation of, of some of these uh, groups. Uh, he developed a doctrine which came to be known as utopian socialism. Uh, it is also not well known that Christian abolitionists uh, formed their own um, uh, religious societies under the uh, assumption that we could not really be Christian, we could not really be fulfilled while there was still slavery. Uh, and their uh, mission in order to become true Christians was to abolish uh, slavery. The label 1831 revivals is another uh, label for the all of these movements under the heading of the Second Great Awakening, just uh, other uh, labels for the same things. Spiritualism developed at this same time. Western New York is famous for uh, the village of Lilydale, which a lot of tourists uh, visit where you can go today to get your uh, your reading and uh, all of those uh, spirits who are hovering around you now uh, will emerge there and will uh, speak to you through the mediums that practice there, especially in the summertime. 
Um, and spiritualism spread uh, was extremely popular. So what was going on? Why the burned over district? Why these many um, uh, groups, which uh, detractors call cults and, um, and dangerous? Um, this was a time of rapid social change. The myth of the Mayflower, as it was called, America was, was founded on the, the doctrine of religious uh, freedom. Nothing could impede the development of, of movements uh, um, motivated by a search for uh, truth. Uh, immigration. Uh, immigration has been a factor throughout American history and look at it in recent uh, uh, decades uh, uh, now. Um, uh, the influx of new people from new area, people who don't speak our language and who don't abide by our customs. But very strong then was the fact of the frontier, uh, the spreading of America uh, westward uh, through uh, the lands of indigenous peoples and all of those dangerous uh, savages uh, out there. Uh, we also need to recognize the influence of European occultism on the development of American supernaturalism. Uh, Eliphas Levy, Hel Helena Blavatsky, you can look these, these look them up. Uh, Eliphas Levy is the founder of that bizarre monster uh, called the Baphomet, which uh, modern Satanists have picked up. Um, and Blavatsky was, uh, um, what was the name of her? philosophy. I'm sorry, I've forgotten it. Uh, but Buffalo right here uh, was a contributor. Look up Ira and William Davenport, who were uh, their own kind of spiritualists. They communicated directly with uh, the supernatural. Foyerism, I've just mentioned. And Aleister Crowley, later, uh, late in the 19th century uh, in England, had a powerful influence on the development of of uh, alternative religion uh, in America. Uh, and local politics, the emergence of the women's, uh, the women's rights movement and Christian abolitionism, all of these things contributed. Um, we should spend some time talking about the 20th century cult scares. I'm mindful of the time, so I'm going to uh, cut this uh, uh, short, um, but the, uh, the theme of, of Satanism, which developed in precisely in 1980 and continued through 1995, a decade and a half, uh, 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 featuring murderous cannibalistic satanic cults. These elements are found uh, really throughout history and have ap appeared again in QAnon today. And um, uh, the the uh, hate uh, uh, mongering of the Westboro Baptist Church and this uh, strange uh, movement of the past few years called Nixium. Uh, Keith Rainier, who is now serving 120 years, uh, this woman, I'm not sure which one this is, if it's Claire Bronfman or which, and the terrible uh, brand that that his, uh, his women uh, 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 were subjected to. In fact, they willingly subjected themselves to being branded by him. Um, uh, Scientology got a bad rap in, in, in recent decades. I'm including this case because it was a Buffalo uh, case. You can look up the name of Ellie Perkins. Uh, and this uh, from the New York Times, a, a nationwide uh, scandal in Scientology. Uh, renegade uh, Mormons who were involved in murders. Uh, Jeffrey uh, Lundgren led his, his group on a murderous spree in Ohio, uh, giving bad names to many of these groups. Western New York saw this group move in um, uh, 20 years ago and uh, in about uh, the late 1990s and early 2000s. Um, they are a Taiwanese group who uh, have had a variety of, of um, messages. Um, Heaven's Gate, what do we say about them? Why do people join such 
you would have to conduct 39 different interviews to to answer that question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, no, that's just. I'm, I'm going to mm -hmm. shut it down. I'm hearing the, uh, the sounds of people uh, indicating that my time should be up. Um, um, Vernon uh, uh, Howells, uh, who took the name of David Koresh, uh, two uh, mes messiah figures, David and Cyrus the Great. You remember that case in the 1990s and the Westboro Baptist Church led by Deacon Fred Phelps, uh, who said that homosexuality is a crime. These are the attributes of the satanic cult scares. I'm concluding with this because these are found again in the, uh, the beliefs about QAnon today. Uh, and if you heard my conspiracy uh, talk of uh, some weeks ago, you heard me spell out my, my theory that these attributes are fundamentally uh, human. Uh, people instinctively fear these things, and there are positive social functions in having such fears. Uh, and they, this is a, the answer to the question, why do people believe these things? And why do people in far different regions of the, of the world that have had no contact with each other, why do they believe them? Why do such beliefs uh, emerge? And they focus on children, they focus on sexuality, they focus on the ritual use of blood, ritual murder, and cannibalism. These elements appear over and over again uh, throughout history. The satanic cult scares spread across our country uh, and they may reemerge in uh, QAnon today. I'm sorry, you are only the second audience who have heard this talk in the history of this talk and uh, you were guinea pigs. So thank you for your attention. I see there are a number of uh, questions there. Ruth, do you wanna handle them? I will, Phil, yeah, there's, um, I think a, a, a lots of really interesting questions have come in. I'm gonna try to pull some of them together. Um, some were, some I'm going to edit out because Phil eventually did address that those topics like QAnon and and um, Scientology. Um, the one, an early question was about the difference between anthropology and sociology. Phil, a, a question that I know you can it's, wrangle it's been, with yeah, with a, two hands old, behind old. your back. An old, old question. It, it was said, first of all, that the anthropologist goes away and the sociologist stays home. Um, but, <laughs> and that's maybe closer to uh, the, the early fact, but in fact, anthropologists have been staying home for, for uh, 20 years. The answer is kind of complicated. Um, we are interested in all of culture uh, rather than just the, the, so, the, uh, the social a group, which the focus of, of sociology. If a sociologist is listening to me right now, that they, they will surely uh, dispute what I just said, but we don't have much time. It's a difference in focus. Then there is a, a question about Latter-day Saints and Adventists. Why, why do you feel comfortable putting them in the, under the umbrella of cults? What I was trying to do, and um, I'm going to do this again a couple of times in the future, and I'm going to have to rehearse and, and condense um, and try to link things together better. Um, what I was trying to do was indicate different organizations that have been called cults by outsiders. The word is has a broad range of applications and and meanings to the user. Um, uh, I, I don't want to say it all again because it's in there and, and, and Ruth has recorded this session so you can go back and, and, and listen again. Um, any outsiders who are suspicious of what's going on over there among those people you see and 
there have been very few uh, religious movements in America who have been um, um, more vilified and subjects of greater suspicion than the Mormons. Um, based on a, a, a fabrication of John Smith and his golden tablets, come on, you know? Uh, but uh, uh, same kinds of allegations have been made against Christians too, their culture founder uh, who, who uh, died and resurrected himself, come on, you know? <laughs> um, uh, and uh, it depends on where you are. It, it depends on the user of the term. And what I'm trying to show you all is that if you're using the word cults, you, you really need to be careful of, of, of that you know what you mean by it. Now, a couple of people have noticed that there was a lot of New York State upstate New York in particular locations mentioned, Phil. The fact that you're based in Buffalo, I'm sure is coincidental, but what is it about New York State that <laughs> seems to have um, um, spawned a, few, a, a lot slides, of cults? A few slides toward the end, I gave a list of, of probable contributing factors to the phenomena that collectively became known as the burned over district. Um, New York had, was in the 19th century, the frontier and the frontier continued to move westward. New York was the recipient of immigrants. New York was the great melting pot uh, of, of all of these factors were present elsewhere, but they came together uh, in concentrated ways uh, through the city and the state of, of New York. That's my best uh, short answer to that question. Mm, interesting. There's also a question about uh, requirements that members commit suicide. Is that quite common? We, of course, remember it, sadly, with the Jamestown, Jones Jim, Jim Jones thing, but... Yeah, and it goes way back to Masada, doesn't it? Um, uh, there is a, uh, some scholars have proposed a category uh, called suicide cults and uh, see that as a common factor. Um, in the case of, of Heaven's Gate, this one is really bizarre. It doesn't fit well into any uh, pre-established model of, of cult-like behavior. Um, you'll have to study it separately and you have to try to understand the psychology of of Marshall uh, Applewhite and of uh, the of his followers who willingly uh, poisoned themselves so that their souls could be liberated. Um, UFO uh, ufology was a contributor here. I don't know if I mentioned that. Also, the belief that there were a alien beings were watching us, uh, and the comet Hale Bop was present in the. Uh, in the uh, cosmos uh, during that time. And right behind the, co the comet, hidden from the view was a alien spaceship. Uh, and we will shuffle off this mortal coil. And that is a literal uh, statement. The followers of Heaven Gate, Heaven's Gate firmly believed that their souls were trapped in this, in, in this human flesh. Their job was to release themselves from it, to go to that higher level and that higher level was represented by this spaceship hovering just out of, out of view behind the comet hale Bop. In order to understand that kind of reasoning and where it all came from, you have to conduct, uh, as I say, an investigation of every one of those. The case of the People's Temple, that horrible mass suicide of, of, of 1976, I think it was, and more than 800 people, right? Uh, you have to follow the whole history of, of Jim Jones's deteriorating psychology, uh, the move from California to, to Guyana, uh, the troubles they had there, the investigations by uh, Congress, um, a whole uh, series of things, and, and things just started going and going out of control. It's a Again, it's an, it's an idiosyncratic aberration. It doesn't really fit well. Um, you might draw parallels with Masada, the people of 
the people of Jim Jones's organization came to believe, or at least they were convinced by him that they were under siege. Um, but more than that, I, I really can't say. There's a lot of literature on on these all of these organizations. You can look them up. Are there any others? Uh, I don't think I talked about any other suicide cults, did I? I don't think so. We have time for a few. Yeah, more questions, so just a couple more. Uh, I didn't hear any cults led by women mentioned. It's, it's probably pretty rare, but do, do you have any data on yeah, that? Here again, it depends on our meaning of cults. Uh, immediately, what comes to mind is an organization called the Church Universal and Triumphant. Look it up. The Church Universal and Triumphant, uh, led by Elizabeth Clare Prophet, and that was her name. I, it may have been an established professional name, Elizabeth Clare Prophet, um, and uh, she died a few years ago. Mother Ann Seaton was the founder of the Shakers. Um, some. Yeah. And abolitionist uh, movements took their cues from the women of Seneca Falls, you know. I also think there might be, uh, we might need to make a distinction between a commune and a cult. Yep. And a sect and a revitalization movement. Um, like I wouldn't call Bronson Alcott part of a cult. It, again, it depends on usually there's some there has to be some theology there has to be some religious uh, uh, direction in the in the uh, 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 ideology of the organization but there was none that I could see in Nixium and that, and no other word than cult was applied to that group um, we know of some of the communes uh, uh, one of the more famous ones uh, developed in the area where Peter and Lynn uh, live up there in northern Massachusetts, the Brotherhood of the Spirit. Um, and would you call uh, a militia uh, a cult? A number of militias, uh, 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 white supremacist movements, um, neo-Nazi movements uh, exhibit a lot of uh, cult behavior. Uh, if secrecy is part of it, if exclusiveness is part of it, so that outsiders don't know everything that's going on uh, and, and suspicions about it develop, the label cult is very quick to, to, to follow. So some of these communes, some of the agricultural uh, utopias of the 19th century, we would call communes. Uh, but they were religious, so hmm. it's it's hard to say. Well, we've come to the end of our time together, Phil. Everybody, how about if we give Phil a, a bit of a silent applause here and thank <laughs> him for sharing his knowledge and experience with us. I'm going to go ahead and you. turn off. I want off to thank you all for your attention uh, uh, and uh, your patience. Uh, you were all guinea pigs, and I appreciate it. Happy June.